Hey guys, Harvey here. I finally got the phone cleaned out and wanted to talk a little bit about these um, these shielded magnets that, that we built according to Roni's uh, design and um, show some of the characteristics that that we've seen here. First of all, uh, we'll, we'll show you that these are, in fact, you know, one way. Yeah, see that uh, they don't stick to the magnet, or they don't stick to the metal ruler there. But if I turn it around, then they stick very well. So, this way, no sticky. This way, sticky. So I, I've made two of them, and uh, I made these little little clips so that I could stick them into the whip mag rotor slots and see how they respond to each other. There are some there's some really interesting characteristics here, and uh, in how they how they interact for, for starters. The shield doesn't doesn't uh, shunt 100%. Let's see if I can get get some distance here. I guess I guess that's all the way out. The shield does not shunt 100%. Um, get the metal out of the way here. It shunts about maybe 90, 95%. So what we'll do is we'll we'll demonstrate that on the on the back side bringing them together and you'll see that it actually will move away there's still still some residual flux there um, of course it's it's nowhere near the do it from this side over here it's nowhere near the the flux that we get over here. I'm holding the rotor with. Oops, that's another another thing I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm holding the rotor with my uh, other fingers while it's under tension, and then I'll let go with my other finger here. So you can see the force that it has. Let's see if I can come in on it. And um, get that. It's picking up off the back side of the flux, the side side edge of the flux here, or it's out of balance. That's what it is. It's not sitting flat on the table. Hold on. Now maybe it'll, now maybe it'll stay there. Pick a place. Stop. It can't make up its mind. All right. Okay. I'm hoping that's it. So here we come. Let's see how close we can get. And off she moves. So, no way I'm going to get as close as I did on the back side, all right? So that's one thing to, um, to show you. You'll notice that if they're side by side, you know, top, so the, the polarities are both running the same way, that it's not even. It will push away like that. And if I reverse the polarity so that the poles are apart from each other and stack them like that, side by side, this is true of all four sides. Symmetrical. Same thing. Okay? 
same thing. Now, that means that I can't hold the camera on the work. <laughs> Keep getting too close, I think. That means that um, there's a point to where it, it will equalize. So even though it pushes away like that, it it does it does have a balancing point in the field. Okay? And that separation is let me do a top down view here and see. See if I can show it. A separation is about like that. And what that is, it's it's a flux pinning. Similar to what we see with with uh, superconductors, you have a gap there. If I push it, it pushes. If I pull it, it pulls. You see that? So it it's it's locked in to the field right at that point. That's its point of equilibrium. And what what causes that is we have a an attraction to the shielding material and repulsion at the same time and that's where it finds equilibrium. Uh, I guess the president's flying over or something. Okay. Back to what we were working on. Back to that flux pinning which is a which is a pretty cool characteristic. All right, so I got a couple minutes left. Let's see if I can wrap some of this stuff up. Uh, there's, there's also an attraction which which you saw happen earlier. If if we're if we're directly aligned in the center on the repulsive poles, then it will repel. But if the internal magnets are offset, and I'll show you those in a minute, then you get this attraction, which is pretty interesting because it's a very steep curve on that. So let's see what they look like on the inside. Uh, it's pretty simple. I've made these, these little caps, which in this case is taking the whole thing apart. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Okay, so there's my cap, and what I've done is I've taken some of this mat that I have under the desk here. In fact, that's where I took it from. You can see where I've gotten it up. I'm going to be replacing that today or tomorrow anyway. So, took some of this mat and I just made wrapping to wrap around the pieces that that are in there. So. That's what I use for spacing. And so we have some on the bottom and some around. And I've got three of these containers. I've got the big the big one inch, and I've got this this smaller one, which is about uh, three quarters or, or thereabouts. And then there's a third one that's actually wrapped around the magnet itself that uh, shielding the magnet. Okay. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you. This is something I posted, which which I find very interesting, um, and it probably relates to that same area that we saw the flux pinning occurring. And it's probably for the same reasons, actually. So, the effect, though, I'm going to go ahead and lopside this, bring it down where we can see it. So what we've got here is I've got a needle. Hopefully you can see it. And I'm going to see if I can come down on the angle here. I don't know if you can see that. Coming straight down. 
it moves away from that edge. Straighten that up a little bit. And then straight down it repels. You ever seen anything like that before? Where a ferromagnetic material will repel? I find that very interesting. Well, that's it. Out of time.